Macca's Guides. <laughs> Hey everyone, Mac here with the continuation of our Doom Eternal walkthrough. This is mission 8, we're getting 100%, and finally a mission, more my speed, right around the 10 minute mark. There are 10 collectibles we'll grab, and this is basically just a long boss fight. There are 9 codex pages, as well as a Praetor suit point, and a couple of extra live 1-ups. The codex page entries are super simple, we saw one right in front of us as we entered, We'll see one right in front of us after we take the elevator. We can then proceed forward and through the set of doors. So number three is just around the corner from that next door. And then go into the room in front of us and at the far end, yet another door. Uh, this is basically just setting up the boss battle. There's a lot of cool backstory and mission information here. For those who are into the Doom lore, I'll let you explore all that stuff on your own as well as watching the cutscenes. After a couple of other doors, you'll see a codex page entry directly in front of you through a uh, kind of window. So just walk around behind it, then jump on the ledges behind the codex page and jump up and grab the higher ledge, turning left to reveal another codex page. Then from here, what we can do is go down the steps to our right. Sorry, I got a little turned around there and press the button. Look to the right hand side, ignoring the party invite from someone you've never heard of. I have that turned off now, by the way, for the rest of the series, so don't worry. But after you jump across the ledge, you'll find an extra life one up, and then we can walk forward and continue into the level a little bit deeper with a giant staircase in front of us. As we enter the room, go forward and to the right to find another codex page entry. Additionally, right next to the door from where we entered, there's also an auto map. Again, auto maps are optional, but can be helpful, so I'm going to pick it up here. You can grab it right as you enter or right before you go up the stairs after grabbing the codex page entry. Once you're at the top of the stairs, make sure you turn to the right hand side before continuing. Follow the path and you'll notice that you can jump across a large gap here. Jump across the gap towards the Praetor suit point, which we will then pick up and feel free to equip. We'll also be doing a boss battle where we'll be using the rocket launcher, the ballista, and the super shotgun quite a bit. You might want to level those up if you haven't already. Then turn to the right to find another extra life for having the second one of this level. Walk forward to the balcony, revealing another codex page entry to your left before taking the elevator. And then once you take the elevator downwards, we'll be entered into a new room. After reaching the top of the short elevator ride, turn around 180 degrees and look directly behind you to find the only somewhat hard codex page entry of this mission. You'll then be able to run forward and in the last room in front of us, we will receive the notice that we can fast travel to anywhere in the level, although the level literally lasts two or three minutes. And do not go through the gate just yet. Instead, make sure you have your ammo and your armor at 100% and pick up the last codex page entry before going through the gate, you should have your nine codex pages, your auto map, your Praetor suit point, and two extra live one-ups. This should start the boss battle, which isn't too bad, but kind of specific in terms of what it wants you to do. For the first phase, what you're waiting for is for the boss's lights on the shield to turn green. When they do, what I would recommend you do is dash left and then shoot with the super shotgun. This should put the boss in a staggered state and open him up. If you're able to hit him after he does this attack, you'll do a quite a bit of damage. But additionally, you'll also be able to occasionally stagger him and then go in for a glory punch style kill. This does a ton more damage than any of the other attacks you'll do, especially if he has his shield up. Another one of the attacks he does is that he shoots the shield forward at you. This is also pretty effective for him, but as long as you're paying attention to his telegraphs, you should be able to just sidestep and dash your way out. Occasionally, ads will spawn near him. You are free to take out these ads in whatever way you want, but generally speaking, those ads are there to give you health and ammo, and that's what you're probably going to want to use them for. Use the flame belch, the chainsaw, and stuff like that to make sure you are not gonna run out of ammo on things like your super shotgun and your ballista. Eventually, you'll end up doing phase one and completing it after you take out his first life bar.
So at the end here, I started using a little bit of the plasma rifle because I knew if I hit him and peppered him a little bit, it would cause him to go into the staggered state, which would allow me to finish off his first life bar. You'll get a little bit of a short cutscene as we stab out one of the eyes, and this will transition the fight into phase two. Phase two is quite a bit different from phase one. The boss will be a lot more aggressive, and he also has an attack where he can spin his nunchucks, and bullets will get deflected back at you. Now, his lights, his eyes do glow green, which is kind of the symbol that he's about to attack, and it also opens him up for damage. What I found to be the most effective strategy for phase two, even if it's not necessarily the right strategy, is to just be super aggressive. Use things like your rockets, your ballista, your uh, super shotgun, and even your BFG, which is something that I resort to once I kind of run out of ammo. You also want to watch out for his attacks and just try to stay facing him at all times in order to make sure that you aren't uh, about to, uh, you know, get hit from behind when you're not paying attention. And hitting him with things like the Arbalest from the Ballista will still cause him to go into that glory kill state, allowing you to do massive damage. This is mostly a balance of guns, aim, and ammo, and it really isn't too bad, but that BFG can really help, as you see here. Takes out about 25% of his health in two hits. From then on there, it's just taking your time, staying patient, and trying not to lose any of your lives. I end up not losing a life, but I end up being extremely close to losing a life. Um, I kind of ended up blowing my shots with my flame belch and had a really hard time generating health here. Um, so yeah, once you're done the boss battle, there will be a somewhat long cutscene to end the level with quite a bit of cool information for those who are into Doom Eternal lore. After the boss battle, there is a little bit more to go though before we start mission 9. I'll rejoin you with commentary in about a minute. After the boss fight, you'll receive an upgrade to your blood punch. You should get all of the 10 combat tokens as well as the 10 exploration for 100%. And that is it. You will be thrown back into the Fortress of Doom and there will be a fight. If you just kind of launch a BFG right through the middle of the fight, you'll take out all of the enemies right away. Uh, after that, you have to power your ship. Once you power your ship, feel free to spend your Sentinel batteries and explore the ship. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm basically going to run back to the teleport to launch it up for mission nine, and we will get started on that in the next video. Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful, make sure you drop a like, share the video with a friend, consider subscribing to Patreon if that is within the realm of possibilities for you. I'd like to thank everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. Shout out to the below, and I'll see you soon. Peace.